Hey guys, welcome to another Talking Truck Show. I'm Andre. And I'm Kent with Mr. Truck. It's been a while, so here we are. It's been a while and we love talking trucks. So, of course, join our conversation in the Super Chat chat room and, of course, in the comments section below. On this show, we're giving you a quick update on what's happening with our 2020 Ford F-250 project truck. I don't see the winch yet. Where's the winch? No. No, no winch? so that's why we're doing an update. Okay. And we're going to tell you what we've done so far and what we're planning to do and kind of some of our thinking behind the project. You know what we did yesterday? What? We finished the Ike Gauntlet and the blizzard, another blizzard. Yes, so yesterday, Kent and I, Mr. Truck and I, we were towing with a 2020 Ram Heavy Duty. Yes, that big giant trailer, that 40 foot iron bolt. Yes. With that kitty cat on the back. With 30,000 pounds and it's part of our gold hitch testing for the 2020 awards. And uh, we're gonna unveil or release the video in about a week, maybe a couple weeks. Well, that's cool. So we ended up doing all three of the big dualies in yes. the snow, yes. in the blizzard, in the yes. cold, but yes. it was full on. You did a half So we on. did, yeah, we did change the light bulbs. Uh -huh. Um, and I'll show you, I'll, I'll turn the truck on pretty soon. Um, but what I want to do, I mean, Super Tremor is kind of our working name for the project. Okay. What this truck will be is kind of a more off-road ready truck. It's already a crew cab four-wheel drive, mm -hmm. uh, FX4 package. So it does have underbody, some underbody protection. It has these steps from the factory and these will probably have to go because we need a little bit more clearance. Uh, I would like to put a tremor step on it. Oh yeah, those you are know, a little tucked under a little better, yes. Yeah, they're, they're tucked in. That's good. And of course, replace wheels and tires. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Where's your fake hood scoop? Are you getting a fake hood scoop? Why Why use a fake hood scoop? Because GM has one on their heavy duty. Uh, Toyota has one on their On their gas duty. trucks, you mean? Uh, yeah, well, this, this is a gas truck, isn't it? Yes. So let's put a fake hood scoop on it, man. No, I, I don't, I don't want to put you a fake hood scoop. You don't want to be fake? Scoop. Hey, that can tie into one of the news pieces. If you get the Harley <laughs> Davidson F-250, you do get a hood scoop. Oh yeah, and a Whipple, Whipple supercharger or something. Yeah. How big, hey, can you do that? Will that fit on the 7.3 or is that just for diesel? Is that for gas? Yeah, that'd be cool. <laughs> I think you're referring to the Whipple on the F-150, right? Yes, that's what I'm The five liter Coyote. Wondering. Can you put that and, on this? Uh, like just yesterday, more news came out on the Super Duty Harley Davidson. So wow. more more stuff is happening from- Is that a factory thing that it's Harley- Super? It's Tuscany Motors, okay, which is so an aftermarket, aftermarket company. Okay, yeah. that's what I was wondering. But they are did the make a lot of Harley Davidson trucks from the factory itself, yes. right? Yes. But what Tuscany Motors is doing is they're working with Harley Davidson directly, and actually mm -hmm. using their logos and their branding and building up four trucks, also GMC trucks. But that I think we saw that Denver Auto Show. We saw some of those trucks, those, those conversions like that last exactly. year. Exactly. Yes. So we talked a little bit about headlights. We have some suspension planned for this truck. And I cannot tell you guys exactly like which company we're gonna go with because we're working those details out right now. So I cannot say, you know, it's gonna be this or that because it's not finalized yet. But we also want to take this truck cross country. So oh. it's gonna be awesome. So you're gonna put a lift kit on too, right? At least the front. A leveling kit, yeah. Leveling kit, yeah. Yeah. cool. So it's, that, it's higher in the front. Jacked up at 35 inch tires, is that coming too? I want to do 36s at least. 36s? Yes. It's going to be like a super tremor, super D. <laughs> That's what it's called. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Come over here, just really quick. <clears throat> so Sexy Justice, love the name. Yes. Just donated $2. Oh, thank you for the donation. We always love it. And by the way, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Zach, I always... Is that chicken? <laughs> oh, you are a chicken. Yeah. I couldn't squeeze the chicken. We didn't bring it. We had no place to set. Well, I guess we do now. Check out how tall this bed is already. I know it. You yeah. Look at that, man. That's yes. strange. Get my arm. I cannot reach my shovels or my pickaxes. <laughs> <laughs> how am I going to use it for a work truck if I can't reach anything? Uh, by the way, Zach, are we still doing like a $5 donation or a $10 donation um, badge and sticker and hats? Yeah, and all hats. Stuff? Stickers are 10. Uh, we're actually out of the patches, but for 50 we do hats. Yeah, what about those cool hoodies? I want the cool hoodie. Yes, a hundred bucks for a hoodie. I thought it was two hundred bucks. Yes, but but they're is? discounted. Oh, they're now. discounted. Yes, it's spring. It's a good time <laughs> to buy a hoodie. Get your hoodie now. <laughs> but guys, we also did an exhaust system on this truck. So uh, we went not crazy, uh, but we removed one of the resonators, left the other two resonators in place, and we did a full video about this upgrading the exhaust system. And at the end of the show, we can also start the truck. Uh, if you haven't heard it already, we'll start the truck at the end of the show and let you hear the new exhaust system. Uh, but also in the back, uh, we're planning, don't, don't look at the snow. 
Um, don't show them the snow. Hey, it's uh, a lot better than it a, was. There was like eight to ten inches of snow in here this morning. Come on, this is a real world truck, man. This <laughs> yes. is a real thing. This well, this truck snow just in. came off the I Gauntlet well, too. There, oh, really? Uh, he was helping us uh, film oh, the ramp. Right. Yeah. So, so this is um, really important. But we also want to do a truck camper because when we're doing our cross country trips, yeah. Um, yeah, we would like to put a camper. We don't have it, it finalized once again, so we cannot say exactly which company or which brand well, we I got will some use. ideas on that, so we'll talk about that. Yes, so, so that's kind of what's going on. And the final piece... Wait a minute, you don't have a tailgate damper and nothing just dropped like a yes, rock? Yes. What's up with that? Oh, do you, know, do you want to know? So uh, the way that Ford does their um, assist on the tailgates, the dampening, um, they have actually, if you remove the taillight, inside of there, they have like a, a little... Um, you know, a shock. Oh, really? A little shock that's mounted inside, wow. and it connects to here. And we, that's an upgrade we can do. Oh, that'd be cool. I want to yeah. do it with my 150 because it just drops like a rock too. But yeah, you, got, you, you probably, also got the step in here too, don't you? Yeah, yeah this yeah, this is cool yeah stuff. this does have a step. So we can keep upgrading this truck, and you will see this truck on the TFL Truck Channel, and of course TFL Now this channel as well um, in the coming weeks and months and years. Uh, we're very excited about this truck still. I like the cleats you have in the so, wall. You can put E-Track on there and do a lot of stuff with those cleats. Where those, the, the whole yes, we have a couple that? more donations. Yes. Um, to get back to Sexy Justice for a second, um, part of that donation was uh, saying that we should name this the Aftershock. The After... To go no. with the tremor. Um, I kind of like that. And then, we should call it Nuclear Warhead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And then I'll Matt, nuclear war hit. Matt donated ten dollars and said, uh, "Thanks for the amazing videos. Great personality and very informative." Well, you're welcome. Thank you for your donation very much. Yeah, and you're wearing your pink in, in honor of Valentine's Day or whatever the hell that is. It is Valentine's Day, but unfortunately, I don't want to go out with any of you guys. Well, I hope not. I want. I do want some <laughs> chocolate chocolate strawberries. Can you get me some chocolate strawberries? No, no I will not. I can get you a sandwich. Would okay. you like a sandwich? Okay. Yes. I'm on a diet. I can't hit chocolate strawberries anyway. <laughs> Give me a sandwich. So, Good. Jim yes. Pellick was saying you should put a camper in it. A Kimbo camper. Well, how do you spell that? K-I-M-B-O. I haven't heard of that brand, but I'll check it out. Thank you for... Thank you for the... Uh, but there is a cool camper made in Colorado that we'll talk about Called later Hallmark on. RV. No, it's a big brother to those guys. They're related. Cool. Cool. It's the... As out and the outdoor out, no, outfitter, 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 outfitter. They got to build tall tops, so you can get a queen size okay. bed. You can get a full size door instead of dipping over like in your old camper. You got to get yes. it in there. Yes, love these outfitters. You got to see them. Hmm. See, uh, final touch we did on this truck is we put an upgraded uh, like a lariat or above um, leather wrapped steering wheel, and Roman has a video about this as well on this channel TFL now. So of course the interior, the rest of the interior will stay mostly stock. And it's relatively comfortable, I mean, for the long haul. Yeah, so. these are, they may have really good seats in these. I've, you know, the Ford seats wear yes. forever. It's, it's a good interior. It, it does look the same as, you know, last year and last year and last year. But it is a nice interior. And look, we have light. Holy you cow. This? Puddle, that's your puddle lamp, man. Ooh. And we got some puddles here, too, don't we? Ooh. Keeps us sipping a puddle. But, yeah, these are those power folding, power telescoping. Now, does this one fold with your clicker? Yes. Oh, I love that. Yes. I love that, man. It's so cool. So the people Do we have the key mad. in the truck? Yeah, um, yeah we'll, we'll start the truck at the end of the show. That's cool. So that's kind of what we've done with the truck so far. We still have a lot more to do, obviously, to make it look unique. I also want to get rid of oh, this chin spoiler. Oh, got to get rid of that. Snow plow, snow yeah. plow. Get rid of the chin spoiler here, and we'll put a tremor uh, chin on this, which is much more uh, low profile and improves your approach angle it's going that's going to be good that is that is that's awesome yeah <laughs> so let's hit a few news and also questions um zach are there more comments and questions coming oh, yeah. in so oh. sean galoy just donated 3.99 canadian yes you cool you should have brought your chicken i know that's an exaggeration. Thank you. Is there a comment related to uh, No comment with that one, but Anthony Thank Manzano you. is asking, when do you guys expect uh, GMC, Ford, and Chevy to release diesel versions of the Suburban, Expedition, and Yukon? Well, Suburban already <coughs> has plans. They've announced that in three years. Yes. Right. So, so you got part of the equation coming up, but who knows? I mean, I don't know that Ford's been real successful with their F-150 diesel. They may tell you something different. But I'm not so sure that that's going to happen right. with Ford for a while. I think GM's right on top of it, and I don't know why. Well, what do they have on Rams? Rams doesn't make SUVs. You have to go to a Dodge 
Durango? Right, so, Is that what it'd be, a Dodge Durango? Or yeah, what? and I don't think they're going to put a diesel in a Durango. Yeah, so it may only there's, be Chevy for a while. So there's talks of Durango maybe having a plug-in hybrid or a hybrid system. Yeah, yeah. But I think your question is more like when are they going to be on sale? Uh, if you're talking about like the 2021 Tahoe Suburban Yukon, um, we don't have an exact date, but I think it's going to be like May-ish, May-ish, maybe June-ish, because there's going to be an event... I don't know exactly when, but like April time frame, April or May. So it's coming soon, within like three or four months. Yeah, that makes sense that you put in that diesel and I hope they do a few things to the exhaust but, brake and all but that. But it's very exciting because yeah. when was the last time the excursion diesel and the suburban oh. <laughs> diesel used to roam the yeah, planet? Yeah, that was like 2003 or something or four for the excursion. That yeah. They had a six liter that had all the problems. But yeah, and that's like Ford Exped or their uh, Expedition. It does really well, so I can't imagine them tampering with that, putting a diesel in it. But yeah, and what, you know, there's been a few th a few of the SUVs in the past. It's a big thing in Europe. You know, all the crossovers seem to have had a diesel. Yeah. So it's a little bit different. They're smaller diesels, but so I I'm know. I'm actually excited for the Tahoe diesel and the yeah. Yukon diesel because yeah. because it's a good engine. We've seen that how good it is, how efficient that is in the Silverado and the Sierra. Yeah, and if they don't so. have any competition, that'd be the ideal time to do it. Jump yeah. on it, GM. That yes. really is a good plan. I like that plan. So Ten back, speeds. Back to the Super Duty for a second. I will not comply. Said, are you going to do a collab with Five Star? Tune the 7.3, please. <laughs> Thank you for the question. We will be working with Five Star on several different future videos, too. Um, there's something um, in the works. Um, so, yeah, we may go to the East Coast because... Roman announced, you know, he, he wanted also to do kind of a Florida to Alaska trip. Oh, wow. That'd be cool. So I cannot promise when we're going to tune this or, or how it's going to be done, but we will be working on this engine. For, uh, yeah. Yeah. That could be the first 7.3 with a tuner on it. That and also, neat. well, initially, my initial dream was su to supercharge it. That was my initial dream. Oh. Um, so, so I don't know if that's possible. We're working very hard on this. Uh, I also want to put an air intake system on this. Yeah, yeah. So, and if we do a supercharger, obviously that will change. Well, yeah, you know? so, yeah. The, the programming, the air intake, the exhaust you got, you know, yeah. that's that's the whole package. That makes and by sense. By the way, by the way, Five Star Tuning, um, they are almost ready to release their tune formally for the seven three. For the seven three. So well, they're cool. they've been working pretty hard. So well, you should be the first one to get it. You really should. There you go. Okay. Mark was asking a question in the live chat, and actually we got a question from Chris on this as well via email. Um, do we have any information on the release date for the Jeep Gladiator Eco Diesel? They said spring, I believe, which means spring starts on March 22nd. So uh, I don't have a date, but possibly within the April to May again time frame. Uh, but you know what else is coming out? What's coming out? A Gladiator Mojave. Oh, that's right. That you guys covered yes, that in Chicago. Yes. Yeah, Dan was Dan there. Dan Atkinson covered it. Yes, yeah. Dan was there, and that's. I mean, that's. You did a bit, yeah, really good coverage by going with just the the frame rail because then you can actually see some of the changes. It's really visually yeah. almost the same. Right, just looking at it, you couldn't really tell. And I'm glad you did that frame off uh, video because that that kind of showed it. But yeah, I mean, it looks like to me that that Gladiators has a lot of things coming. So people demand's good for it, so they're going to keep doing things to it yeah. like that. Mojave, like the diesel, like all these other things. So. Yeah, until until it slows down on sales, you're going to see a lot of things coming your way for the Gladiator folks. Yeah, and Mojave is basically kind of a desert runner, so they've updated uh, shocks, yeah. remote reservoirs, right? Um, rear locker, uh, no front locker, and kind of they raised the nose a little bit. You yeah, know, just a, yeah. just a, another almost an inch. Is there something done to the transfer case so they go higher speeds on sand? I know there's something they're they using their sand. not a rock crawl transfer case, but a regular transfer case. Okay. So that's what they were using. So they've done a lot of changes to that truck. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, so that's pretty exciting. And it's like, is there a lift on it? Because that's one thing it needs is to get up higher so it doesn't Just a hair in the front, it. they said. Just uh, a hair. Just a hair in the front. Okay. Yeah. Well, that seems to be everybody's putting their lifts on the front these days. <laughs> Nobody has a whole well, because, lift anymore. They because just, the trucks look like this. Because yeah, if you put the payload on uh, it, that's the it toy settles package. down. Yeah, they're yes. all nose divers. Yes. And that's why they have these snow plows on them. <laughs> <laughs> so you can reach the snow. All right, no, we have another donation here. Ten dollars from Bigfoot Ave, who's donated several times in the past. Thank oh, you, man. Thank you. Says, I love the snow tire test. 
Do you guys plan to do the same with chains and cables? I'm very curious to find out how much oh. of a benefit it is. You're getting to be a chain expert now, by golly. We bought chains was it yesterday. So, so we're carrying <laughs> chains in our heavy-duty trucks for towing because it's a requirement. It's the law now. It's, it's They're the law. Kind of nasty it's been the law for a long time, but yeah, in been, the higher yeah. weight categories, right. you have to do it. Yeah, yeah you got to have really well, dedicated Well, if we tires. get more comments like this, we'll do a chain show. Yeah, that would be because, you know, we, we know an expert chain. on chains. We'd get several styles and compare them, talk yes. about them. We even get him to do a guest, guest speaker kind of thing. Yeah, we do have an expert who lives in Colorado. Yeah, um, yeah. Good friend and, of And a uh, good friend of Ken's and, and mine. And uh, so, yeah, we could do it. So give us more feedback if you guys want to see more truck chain I think, traction I think that's shows. A good idea. We need to do it while it's still snow on the ground, too, you know. Because it costs money, right? We need to oh, buy all the chains. I was surprised how much chains cost. It's, I haven't bought them in a long time. I've yeah. got chains. I've got snow socks. I, I haven't bought them in 15 years. So One thing I, I don't know. recommend, do not buy chains in the winter. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. they're expensive yeah. in the winter. Okay. You can't find uh, them. Other questions? Um, Anthony Manzano again asks, are you guys excited for GM bringing back the Hummer? Andres. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> The what? What is it called? It's called the Hummer. The Hummer. Hummer. Uh, Hummer. <laughs> I'm, di I'm dinger, huh? The Hummer. Okay. Electric Hummer. Oh, wow. That's and exciting. And what are you guys expecting it to look like? I'm expecting it to look like my 2003 Hummer. <laughs> All right, excuse me. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> no, we don't, we don't know. The, you, there was a concept uh, several years ago called the Hummer HX. HX? HX. It was a concept thing. It looks like kind of like a Humvee. Is that what the electric looks like? Similar to that? We don't look, know. It's a really weird looking grill. Well, they on showed one grill image yeah, yeah. And with, with the lights and all that stuff. Mm. So I, I think it might look similar to the concept that'd in be, some ways. Yeah, that'd be weird going from the worst fuel mileage to maybe the best if they go electric. So Because it used, what, 10 miles a gallon was the average on that hey, puppy. Mine gets 11.3. Holy cow, 11.3. Yes. Congra congratulations, man. That's yes. just awesome. Yes. Uh, speaking of electric trucks, can I, can I make Go a ahead. couple of comments? Because this week, a couple of other possible, maybe, maybe, electric trucks Someday. were announced. Uh, Nicola Badger. Nicola? Is the ones that blow those trumpets up in the Swiss mountains? <laughs> no, it's nope. not Ricola. It's not all Ricola. Okay. <laughs> no. I didn't know. It's, it's Nicola Motors. And they're based out of Arizona, actually. Oh, cool. Yeah, and uh, they were doing fuel cell. Um, they haven't produced a fuel cell semi truck yet. Oh. But they want to do a pickup truck, and we have a video about that on TFL Off Road Channel. Um, Steven did one, and we have one here on TFL Now. Um, still renderings. Which, which one comes first, the semi or the pickup? Because I'd like to see a pickup. The semi should getting a lot of attention. You know, I think they said they might come out at the same time in 2022. 22. So, so Mr. M was saying, oh, God, please stop talking about EV trucks until they're actually ready. Okay, I think, <laughs> moving on. But here, here's the thing. I think I, it's uh, a, it uh, makes uh, a good point because until the first automaker actually pulls the trigger and launches an electric truck, it's all just kind of academic, really. Oh, come on. We talked about the Gladiator for years before it came out. We talked about the Ranger you know, here. We're, we're, we're talking about the Bronco decades before it comes <laughs> out. So what's different? What, what is it? What's well, speaking of a walk yes. through history, Kent, um, Mark has a question here. He's been asking patiently. Um, I have a great history question for Mr. Truck. Back oh. in the 1970s, how were gooseneck hitches attached in the beds of pickups? Also, did dealers offer them? No, back in the 70s, <laughs> the rear bumper on a Ford was an option. The spare tire was an option. They didn't come from the factory until 99. But, yeah, back then when I was in an egg shop in the 70s, on one Chevy, I actually welded a plate metal on the frame, welded it to the frame, because we didn't know any better. That's how a lot of them were. I mean, it was a homemade thing. There were goosenecks. I mean, that was just starting. A lot of them were grain haulers for farmers, and that's the first ones I saw, and that was uh, very early 70s. So is any way you can put one in? I mean, some guys had fly beds, some guys went with the cabin chassis, mm -hmm. but yeah, it was a new thing in the 70s. And so a lot of that, I don't remember, I don't think B&W was around then. They were the first ones to have that turnover ball. But I, I we're, yeah. We're very spoiled these days. Yeah, now, back I mean, then, I think it was your, your homemade shop, your farmers and your welders, and I think that's where most of them yeah. came from in, in the early 70s. Yeah, my neighbor, Tim, has a 2001 GMC heavy-duty truck, yeah. Sierra, yeah. and he put a fifth-wheel you know, hitch in it, right. but it's an off-to-market hitch. Yeah. It's not like you can go call GMC and say, I have a 2001 truck, <laughs> give, me a, give yeah. me a gooseneck or a fifth wheel. He had to go out somewhere else oh, yeah. and get a hitch. Now, yeah. my 1977 Chevy C30, one ton, I took the after I broke the, the fenders off that thing, I put a Plunkett flatbed on it from Texas or Oklahoma, 
and that had a welded in gooseneck and that was kind of the thing then too a lot of farmers had flatbeds to put all your tools and stuff on so that's how that, that was 77 but i wasn't alive back you then. weren't alive no. where the hell were you i was in a i was a dream you're in the abyss yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. move on yeah sure why not um Mark had a question via email asking, um, what's the best midsize or half-ton truck for around 30000 He said, I'm retiring a 2006 Forerunner, okay. which is indestructible, but it's time to move on after 255,000 miles. Okay. I'm looking to buy a used truck somewhere in the 28 to 32000 range, uh, nice something mm. that is either family-friendly midsize or manageable half-ton. Because he lives in a suburban area with tight roads. He's an EMT, so he needs to get to work in all weather conditions. What would be your recommendation for that kind of budget? I, I think that one is he's got the right price. He'll be able to find something. A lot of these guys come in and they want a five thousand dollar truck. Yeah. No, is this a brand new 000. question, Zach, also for kind of a brand new vehicle or and it's no, uh, oh, he said like used. used. Yeah. Oh used. Yeah, I think he's in the right the right price range. So I mean, that could be a lot of trucks. Jeez, for 28000 you could buy a H1 Alpha Dura. H1. No, you and this no, 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 that's no, a little high. No. Yeah, no. There's a lot of the Toyotas you could buy. There's, I mean, uh, there's you know, the Chevy Colorado, the Canyon, Nissan Frontier is one of the most, you know, economical values back then. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. Uh, yeah, I mean, but, he, so did he say mid-size or did he say full-size? I didn't quite. But he lives in the city. Mid-size so. or manageable half-ton. Manageable half-ton was a Titan. The Titan was a little bit smaller than some other half ton trucks. Yeah, back and the, then. yeah, yeah. And then um, the early Tundra was, but that yeah, and the early going, Tundra. That's a lot of miles. Those are going way back. So maybe a Tundra, a Tundra. If you can find a crew cab or a access cab, you know, with four doors, um, a crew cab Tundra early one is hard yeah. to find. Yeah, yeah. Those so are that, hard to find, but if you yeah. can, uh, that mm -hmm. could be a good truck. But I think maybe you're in more in the mid-size segment yeah yeah more of a yeah, mid-size yeah some of those older titans of it would you know they came oh, out what 2004. Oh. oh you can buy a pristine dakota what about that a dodge dakota yeah dodge there's a reason Ram. for that you know there's a reason a pristine <laughs> one okay but yeah you got to watch some of those vehicles that are you know old and low miles is because they were in a shop most of their lives so that's a word of wise is efficient but yeah there's a lot i mean he's got the whole world to it if he you know, I mean, I know he can get a Frontier, he can get a loaded Frontier for that kind of money. He could, be, he could probably get a, you know, a Tacoma that he would be happy with. Depends on how tall he is. You know, Tacomas are not made for big people. So, so uh, just to get to Anthony Manzano's question, because he's been asking, again, I can answer it for us. Um, what diesel engine will the Yukon and Suburban get? It'll be the three liter Duramax. Yeah, yeah, three liters straight that six. That inline six inline with six. a exhaust brake. And a 10-speed. Yes. Yes. I mean, that so the, 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 it just sounds it's good. Not, it's not a base engine. I mean, no. you'll have to pay extra for it. Well, and same actually, price is a 6.2, which will yeah. be available in that truck. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. Um, uh, pricing for the Tahoe was kind of not unofficially released recently. A car and driver did a story on this, and they said about $50,700 where the new Tahoe 2021 Tahoe will start. Um, so it's reasonable, it's about $1,000 more than a previous generation current Tahoe. So they're not jacking up the prices up according to this too high, but still raising it about at least a grand. Yeah, they have to, that's my brand new model. They got a lot invested in yes. that, so there's no way around that. And that, that diesel, we, I really like it in the Silverado 1500. I mean, yeah. it was efficient. It was it accelerates well. It's pretty pretty nice engine. I want grade shifting to improve in the exhaust brake. Yeah, they, they got the only exhaust brake, and it, it, it needs a little needs a little bit of uh, calibration. They but yes. I, I like that engine too. I just think it's so close to being yeah. perfect. Pajama time. Pajama time <laughs> was asking in the comments. Um, do you have any input on the overall performance of the seven point three liter engine in this? Pajama time. Does that mean that Valentine's Day? No, I'm not. Day, I'm not wearing pajamas. I'm not putting up. I'm sorry. Real world performance? Just overall impressions on performance for the 7.3. Oh, it's got power. It yes, pulls so, the trailer well. Yes, we published an eye gauntlet already, uh, including an unedited version of uh, the uphill run. Yeah, and how fast? How much faster was it? Yeah, it, it's it's about three minutes faster than the comparable Chevy 2020 truck. So, and around town. Um, so the only thing I've noticed with the 7.3 10 speed mm -hmm. is when you rev it up, it takes a while for the revs to calm down. 
you know well, even, it's excited even, it's so <laughs> yeah it wants to kind of stay up in the revs yeah, yeah. so if you're used to a smaller <laughs> truck like a mid-size or a half ton where boom boom you can kind of control the rpms really quickly yeah this big engine it speeds up and then kind of <laughs> slows down. It speeds up. Well, let's so wait it's for the next of, gear. It's going to go down. Let's go up a gear. So it's, it's ready. kind of a, it is kind of a big block uh, kind of a quality to it. It sounds really cool. I yeah. mean, it, it's nice to have V8s. And, you know, I know we're yeah. all going away to electric someday, but whenever I hear a beautiful V8, I just love it. And this exhaust mm -hmm. system on this truck is, is quite good. Yeah. Of course, you want it to be louder, but yes. you got overridden. Do um, you yeah. want to hit another news? Section under. Well, there's just one other comment, uh, more of a rumor um, that I noticed recently this week, is that uh, there's a rumor that for 2022 model year, uh, half-ton trucks from GM will have an updated interior. That's a question a lot of you have asked us when or if the Silverado 1500 and Sierra 1500 will have new interiors or updated uh, interiors. What happened in, the night in 2019? So yeah, but you know how later? people criticized it? You know, everybody's mm -hmm. criticizing the interior. And everybody wants to know. And the rumor, the latest rumor, not officially, says 2022. Well, I'm an old farmer, so me, I do not get excited about interiors. Okay. I get excited about power and towing. So, and yeah. Functionality you, of that. Right. Yeah. I mean, I, to me, it's an interior. But anyway, that's just my view. But, yeah, I'm glad we do do interiors. And, you know, I can tell a difference in them. But I, I would never judge a truck by an interior on my decision to buy it. But that's, that's just Mr. Okay. Truck. I'm okay. old. I'm okay. old. That's okay. <laughs> Are you like Zoidberg? Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Okay, so we had a couple more questions I wanted to get to. The people were emailing us. We've been getting a lot of them, actually. Um, Tyler says, I have a 2017 GMC Canyon coming off lease soon. Uh, I haven't been impressed with the truck, and I'm going back to a full size. I'm curious about your thoughts on the Silverado um, with the uh, 5.3 V8 and the 8-speed, and uh, as I am disappointed, they do not offer it with the new 10-speed in the RST. He's asking specifically about the RST. Huh. Um, so your new I, one doesn't have a 10-speed. Yeah, it does. It does? Yeah, it's a trail so boss. That, that all happened this year, then. So, yeah. <coughs> so, so yes. Yeah, so I'm going to do a whole <coughs> buyer's guide video on the 2020 GM 1500 engine options right, because right. there's so much powertrain choice and you can tell why you got the 5.3 you know that's not my choice but i, I understand yes. it i understand it yes and you'll uh, talk about that later in that thing because well, it makes sense in a lot of areas right i mean you know, everybody has to be a gas guzzling power hungry flying down Beast. the road guy like me yeah <laughs> some of us can actually be realistic in this planet well so. no 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 but we bought uh, the second project truck we have is a 2020 uh silverado 1500 trail boss um that's not here uh, right now but we'll be doing many many videos with it starting with a kind of a powertrain uh, overview yeah um, ours does have a 10 speed with a 5.3 <clears throat> and it's a kind of a new combination they haven't done it until now much yeah. so now it's just uh getting more and more widely kind of used yeah the 5.3 has got some power there's nothing wrong with that so and the 10 speed is usually good yeah and it's gorgeous yes. red with black accents yeah. i mean it's it's a good looking truck so stay tuned we'll do a lot more videos on this we'll have real world data fuel economy acceleration deceleration towing so you will see it you should put a camper on that a camper on this we all go camping from florida to alaska have a good time we also have a gladiator yeah, was our camper made for that? Maybe there is. You could put whatever you want in the back. I think let's go full size, man. Let's go okay. Chevy and Ford. And another question? So Real quick. Well, just to finish out <clears throat> Tyler's question, um, he was saying he tows a 4,000 pound trailer about 3,000 miles a year. Other than that, it's city driving, commuting to work. Um, he's been hearing the rumors on the new interior update for the Silverado and Sierra. Do you think I should wait right? Do you think I should wait to see if they bring the 10-speed across the whole lineup, as Ford did with their uh, updates, or just go with the 8-speed now? Um, if, you want, if you're going to wait, you may be waiting a long time. Just take it from me. I'm still waiting for my new truck. Uh, five years down the road. Yeah, I so, several times you had a chance to buy one, but no. So if you <laughs> want to wait, you may be waiting many, many months or years. Um, so an eight speed is not bad. We've done a lot of tests with the eight speed. Yeah, I mean, Ram does really well uh, with eight speed. Yeah. So you know. And so nothing wrong with the GM eight speed as far as I know. We've never had an issue with it. It's towed pretty well. Yeah. Be before. Yeah. Um, so just test drive it and figure it out. 
just yeah, see it. Yeah, it may surprise you. It may do it fine. In 4,000 pound trailer, you, you'd do fine with that. Yeah, it's not a heavy trailer. Yeah, no, that's, yeah. that's you can grab it. 5.3 will do really well with that. Okay. Trailer. Okay. Brett from Georgia <clears throat> is asking, um, I recently moved uh, to a different work location, driving about 50 miles five days a week, and he currently has a GMC Sierra 2500 with the 8.1 liter Vortex. Yay! Wow. And the Allison! Yay! Wow. I, I missed that truck. And his truck has 105,000 miles on it. Oh, it's broke in. Here's the rub. His gas mileage is pretty bad, as you can imagine. Okay. Uh, 11 to 12 miles per gallon. Yeah, like a Hummer. <laughs> uh, he's also not wanting to put a lot of miles on his Sierra, so he's looking at a 96 to 2004 Chevy S10 or GMC Sonoma 4x4. Mm hmm uh gm guy partial to gmc uh i think uh i'll hold out and get a chevy s10 zr2 or gmc sonoma high rider what do you guys think of those trucks s10 that's way back when or yeah. or a sonoma and, 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 a, 90s, early and a zr2 those are real hard to find i was looking yes. for one of those and it's just yes. like any performance vehicle they're all tore the crap people love them and use them so I, that's hard to see nothing has a good line on one i'd love to have one of those but it's got the wider axles well he already has flares. a really rare oh i know 8 he's collect these ruins if he's got he's, a good lead on one of those i mean i'm all for that S10, you're a collector right? so I, I don't have much experience with those trucks so there you go yeah. if you can find a good one buy it yes it's in good shape because those are rare. I, I looked. Look, I was trying to get one. Yeah, look at the history. Look at the you know uh, service records. Anything you can find. VIN checks. Um, everything. Yeah, it's like so. the Cyclones and the Typhoons. Those are really impossible to find and aren't torn yeah. to crap. You yeah. know, that's what. It's like Corvettes and Mustangs. You know, those older ones. People use them, and that's they're not in great shape. You don't find them in really good shape unless he's got a line on it. Do we have any other prepared questions um. or? One more, but one quick question from the live chat. Uh, Monahan TP is asking, please help um, Falcon leveling tow haul shocks, or should they get the new Ford Performance leveling kit for their 2018 Ford F-150 FX4? I want one of those leveling kits. I, I already talked you about You have an F-150. So I do with the FX4. So I, I got the question. I so you're it. saying Terraflex Falcon shocks? With adjustability for tow haul, yeah, or the new Fox-based system yeah, from Fox. Ford. Yeah, uh, I've never, dr I haven't driven the new Fox system from Ford. Their performance parts. Well, it's system. hard to hard to criticize a but, Fox shock though. But it's integrated into the truck. Ford guys had their hands on it. Yeah. So I would be leaning towards that if they're the same price. Uh, although I really love the rear shocks and the Falcons. And what but, have you? What do you had? Did you put them on the Rebel? What did you have them on? Yeah, the Rebel had the them. Rebel? Okay. The Rebel had them, and okay. also I've tested it on an F-150 a couple of years ago. So, but I'm leaning towards the Fox kit, uh, but we need to test it. Well, yeah, I mean, almost all the Razors, all this have gone to Fox. Fox has really grown. You know, they started out with bicycles. Yeah. Now look at them; they're on everything. Everything. Everything yes. is important. Yeah. Uh, a few people have been asking for updates on the old Ford F-350 Gunsmoke. Gunsmoke is still alive, and of course it's here. Um, actually, it's at the shop. Uh, it's getting a couple of updates oh, at our done. mechanic. I was all excited about yeah, it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's I want to drive it on the Ike. Oh, you do? Okay. And many people were so, suggesting earlier in the show in the chat that we should do exactly that. Yes, I got four trailers, man. We'll pick one and we'll fit it and we'll go. Okay. Take Roman uh, along and he can I, just get scared. I will, out of his I will mind. run the chase truck. <laughs> you and Roman can drive yes, it. Yes. Uh, like you did the um, 85 K10. Yeah, the K10. I remember yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Roman remembers it. Well, I'll take him along. That would be awesome. I'd love to re review another, so, another truck. So we're still working on it, updating a few parts, brake system. You know, the brakes oh, were brakes, not. Oh, brakes. That's important for the uh, Yeah, the brakes yes. were not very strong. So we're updating it and, uh, uh, you know, fixing it up. And uh, when it's fixed up, we're going to. Show it. I think that would be fun. I think that would be a good way to demonstrate it. If people want to bid on it for charity, I think that would be cool. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, last of the prepared questions from Stuart. Um, he says, I tow a 27 foot Airstream with a GVWR of 7,600 pounds. Okay. And currently have a 2015 GMC Sierra with the 5.3 engine and tow package in 107,000 miles. Uh, as I get closer to retirement, we'll be in the Western USA a lot, including Colorado. I would like to get a replacement truck that will make those trips more relaxing, um, maybe tow up to 10,000 pounds. If you were in my shoes, what truck would you recommend as an upgrade from the Sierra? 
more relaxing 10,000 pounds. Well, if you're going to go to 10,000 pounds, maybe a 2,500 um, three-quarter ton might be up your alley. If he drives in the mountains a lot, yes. it certainly wouldn't hurt. But most of your half tons are ready to clear up to 12,000 now. Yeah. So the half tons can do it. You know, if he's got like a good weight distributing hips to level it out. Because yes. Airstream, man, they got a belly pan on them. They're like an aircraft. Yes. So they're actually pull it pretty easy. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. I mean, yeah. Yeah, I mean, if you're going to so, go, is he going to travel in the mountains a lot or is it just occasionally? I yeah, if you're below 9,000 on your trailer, um, if, if you're upgrading your trailer, yeah. maybe a half ton 6.2 liter V8 would yeah, do great. That would have plenty of power. We've showed it on many times on the Ike. Yeah. Um, if you're going to 10,000 or a little bit more, maybe look at the 2,500 GM. Um, even gas. Gas would work fine for that weight also. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that's true. You don't have the, to buy the, a diesel for 10,000 pounds. The 6.6 with that 6-speed would be fine, yeah. and, but another year might be a 10-speed, so I don't know. Yeah, yeah, that, uh, 10, that, that's, a, that's a good weight, and if, if, if you know, 7,600 for the Airstream now, you add the, you know, the, the, all the water, all the propane, it's easy to you know, get all the, his sandwich making. Yeah, you get all that 1,500 pounds yeah. real quick. So once you have a good weight distributing hitch, but yeah, and a good, really good brake controller for that. Now, if he buys a new one, and actually GM has good brake controllers. I don't yeah. mind them a bit, but. So yeah. there's a quick comment here saying, Mr. Truck, please cowboy hat in gun smoke oh. up the Ike. Yes, I will. I'll, I'll, I'll get my, I got a big cowboy hat too. I got some big ones and they might fit in that truck and we will just rock and roll. Me and Roman. You, you know, uh, you just looked, you reminded me of Sylvester Stallone well, just I, switching your hat I around. I sing rap music on the weekends. You know that? <laughs> wow. <laughs> Is that on your channel? No. Okay. No, that's, that's actually, it's under All the right. radar. So should we fire up the truck? Yeah, let's see what that Do you want to go listen like. to it? Yeah, with, with I, your want microphone? You, I want you to fold the mirrors uh, in too. Oh. That is so cool, man. <laughs> Give me the keys. I'll fold those mirrors in. Oh my it. gosh. All right, so if you go around the back, so you let me can, open the door? Yeah. Let's do that. Oh. Are you guys ready? Holy back cow, there? there's a white razor out there. I bet that's got Fox shocks. Oh yeah, where's the exhaust? Look, there's two of them. Thunder row. And the ground oh, is yeah. shaking beneath our feet. <laughs> <laughs> I cool love rumble. the idle. Now I know that Andre wanted it a little louder and Roman wanted it to be, you know, something you could drive every day. So well, I guess Roman won that battle. Well, also we got a lot of comments too that a lot of people who live near a road or a highway, yeah, they don't want to hear insanely loud trucks. That's true. They want you to shut off uh, your exhaust brake and your exhaust yeah, muffler. Yeah. So I think this is that. just the right combination of good deep sound, but not super super crazy. That's true. On a second truck, I like to wrap them up, get them nice and loud. But on the daily driver, I don't. But eventually, I will take a sawzall at the end of the project, and I'll hack off the system, and I'll let it breathe. Let it breathe. Yeah. Oh, okay. I thought you said let it breathe. And I think, what the hell is he talking about? <laughs> All right, guys. Thank pipes. you. Thank you very much. And uh, join us next week, Mondays at same time, noon Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern. We do a car-based show. And Fridays at same time, we do truck show. Yes. And, of course, you can go to TF, uh, TFL mm -hmm. Truck and MrTruck.com. Mr. Yes. And next week, we're going to review the... What? What? I lost your sound. Yeah, that. <laughs> okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha.